from the locker room at the M&M Multimedia Studios, this is the Six Man Podcast. When it comes to technology, these guys are running the fast break. Now straight off the bench to save the game, it's your technology champions, Mike Early and Alex Johnson. Welcome, Alex, and welcome, everyone, to another episode of the Six Man Podcast. We are your technology champions. We've got another great show today. We're talking SD-WAN with two industry experts from Massergy. Before that, though, if you've li- listened to us before, uh, thank you and welcome back. If this is your first time, let me break down what this is all about. As technology changes at an exponential pace, it really, really is hard for uh, business owners and IT leaders mm-hmm. to keep up. In this six-man podcast, we basically come off the bench as your trusted technology advisors. We bring in industry leaders, special guests to really, truly navigate through the confusion in the technology marketplace. We break it all down so you, the business owner, can really, truly get an understanding of what these technologies can do for your business. If you have any questions or feedback, please contact us by email at info at sixmanpodcast.com. You can also text or mess, leave a message at 239-215-4200. Okay, so today's show, Alex, we're talking, as I said, SD-WAN or Software Defined Network. As the world is connected to the internet in everything we do, more and more companies are moving to the cloud. The main component that pulls this off for everybody is the underlying wide area network and your internet infrastructure. So we gotta get all those bits and bytes to the right places efficiently as possible and as quickly as possible because no one wants to wait around anymore. (laughs) They want instant access. So Alex, tell me what you know a little bit about SD-WAN. Well, good, I'm glad glad, glad you said that because I do know very little about SD-WAN. I I do know that um, (laughs) <laughs> the little bit that I do know might be a little dangerous. However, that's the reason we work with you know industry experts like Mastergy, right, to implement their solutions inside our clients' environments, right, that provide a hardened solution, uh, keeping their IT network up and running 24-7, 365. Let me try to put it down in as okay. best layman's terms as I possibly can. Uh, a typical wide area network uh, for a business encompasses – some point-to-point circuits, possibly MPLS, and the most common, uh, the internet. You know, the, whether it's broadband, fiber, wireless, et cetera, it's all connected. And with cloud-based services becoming the norm, right? Yeah. Bandwidth requirements are increasing exponentially, yeah. right? It, they become more and more, more and more uh, mission critical. So before SD-WAN, you would have multiple inter- internet circuits and one provider was used as a backup, right? Right. So often that lying dormant, doing nothing for you, just kind of sitting there waiting to see why the other circuit is just overloaded. Very, very inefficient, right? The answer became SD-WAN. Some really, really smart people started to put this together. And this, the solution basically intelligently manages the IP traffic across all available networks. So it provides a more efficient connections by harnessing the power of all your available bandwidth, saving your company obviously time, which is equals money, right? right. So you're utilizing both circuits out there and efficiently getting out there. You know, it... it- so it, it makes your current internet smarter and stronger, right? It helps you find the best routes for your network traffic. Uh, and as you said earlier, right, moving that traffic quicker and more efficiently, right, means your business runs more efficiently, means your employees get more work done, means your customer experiences are better, right? Right. Um, and moving all that traffic to efficient, or I'm sorry, efficiently and quickly to sites like your CRM in the cloud, right? Yep. Um, AWS, right? If you have a hybrid cloud or a private cloud solution, or, you know, hey, even ESPN to check your basketball scores, right? <laughs> Absolutely, uh, right? Regardless of where you're going, um, the Master G product or the SD-WAN product is going to help make that more efficient and more pro- pro- productive getting to that to that end site. Right. I, I like, you know, the internet, I kind of liken it when I say this. I know it's not a real, true living organism, but it 
it's it is. It's some some providers have good days and others have bad days, right. depending on virus, network traffic, what's you know whatever is going on in the internet. Um, so you kind of picture your internet connection as a super highway, right? Right. It's getting you out there. Well, if it suffers some con- congestion. SD WAN is the navigation that automatically reroutes that traffic to the fastest highway with less traffic, right? right? So making it more efficient. And even if one of your connections goes offline, it you don't your business doesn't see a blip right. in that. So so basically it's like uh, the app I use for traffic ways for your internet connection. <laughs> That's a good one. You know, basically kind of is. Right? So so any any company that utilizes the Internet for what uh, they would consider mission critical, which, again, in today's world, uh, damn near every company is yeah. is reliant on an Internet connection for a critical part of their business. Right. right. If not all of their business. So so if, if you have a mission critical or if you can't go down. Right. Um, they should be calling me to talk about SD WAN and how we get Master G in there to make this work, right? Uh, yeah, ninety nine percent of them should be getting picking up the phone, and we should be hearing from you at two three nine two one five forty two hundred and get Alex in there to discuss how we can keep your business up twenty four hours a day, seven days a week. Three. Let's do it. All right. So in today's starting lineup is Master G's director of solutions engineering, Mike Long. Mike Long has a career in technology, starting with the Army, where he's implementation of laser-guided military uses. He used a computer-aided design system to build stealth submarines, build high-availability electric grids. Then, with the state of Florida, built the state of Florida's first IP backbone for the K-12 community college and university system. So basically, he invented the I thought it was Al Gore that invented well, it. <laughs> I'm, I'm so confused. Right. So from there, uh, when the internet became you know, a monetary uh, product, uh, he moved to BellSouth.net to make the internet usable for the business community. And so for almost 40 years, he has been utilizing and helping technology advance. Joining Mike is Global Account Executive for Master G, Jason Beavers. Jason is an industry expert starting his career with Verizon in 1998. You're not as old as me, but you're getting there. Then on to WorldCom, helping multiple national enterprises design and implement wide area networks. And now he's with Master G Designing SD Networks. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you very much for joining us. Welcome, guys. Mike, uh, who are Go Thank Army. You. Yeah. <laughs> hoo ha. Isn't that? I thought that was Marines. Hoorah. Hoorah. Marines. I'm yeah. sorry. That's all right. Sorry. That's all right. Uh, sorry. 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 Before uh, you guys came on, we were talking the you know the basics of SD WAN, but before we really dive into that with you, Jason, please uh, tell me a little bit more about Mass Messaging and who you guys are, and obviously some of the big news that has come down recently. Well, uh, fantastic. Uh, you know, thank you for the uh, opportunity to join the uh, Six Man Podcast. Uh, this morning, um, we uh, thoroughly enjoyed uh, all, the, all the previous uh, episodes thus far, and are looking forward to being a part of it. Um, so, uh, you know, Mason G, you know, is a uh, currently a, a privately held uh, global IP engineering firm um, supporting enterprise customers, you know, across the globe, you know, uh, helping them achieve their most critical business objectives, both operationally and fiscally. Um, that's a mouthful, right? Um, so uh, we've been around uh, coming up on uh, 21 years uh, next month. Uh, so we're, we're almost legal drinking age. Um, it, it means that uh, obviously we're, we're going to stick around for a little while. Um, so over that 21 years, uh, Major G, you know, uh, has accumulated roughly uh, we're about 440 million dollars a year in uh, annual revenue. Um, Mike Long is going to talk about you know some of the technology and you know, some of the, the paths to how we got there. We were an early uh, SD-WAN you know, pioneer uh, delivering to the marketplace, you know, um, on the front end of the, the trend that is happening out there. Uh, you know, we, we have 1,600 clients, you know, across 102 countries today. Um, and, and we offer, you know, some of the, the best SLAs in the marketplace, um, including um, oftentimes unheard of some uh, 100% proactive uh, uptime SLAs that are out there. 
Uh, but there's been some big news uh, here at uh, Maestro G over the last, uh, well, we're going on a month now. I think it'll be a month tomorrow. Um, there was a big announcement. Um, Comcast Business um, has announced that they will be acquiring Maestro G. And uh, we couldn't be more excited, um, you know, to, to be a part of the, the Comcast business uh, family, um, the investments that are going to be, you know, made into our organization um, to, to help expand that global footprint and, and to continue to, you know, grow the business. So, as, you know, we are a, a, a partner first uh, organization, you know, we get a lot of questions, you know, to us about, you know, what does that acquisition mean? For Masergy, as you know, customers and partners have, you know, over the last 20 some years have become accustomed to working with um, a smaller organization, you know, with you know roughly 450 to 500 employees. You know, we're nimble. You know, we can be flexible when it comes to you know terms and conditions and so forth. So here's what we know um, right now: is that um, it's business as usual. Um, you know, when is the acquisition expected to close? I heard this morning that um, we're looking at mid-October, um, so it, it's moving very rapidly. There are transition teams uh, from both uh, Maestrogy and uh, Comcast, you know, business, you know, working on, you know, the integration and, and on that close. Um, so uh, we're, we're looking at a mid-October close. What, what that ultimately, um, you know, is, is what we're being told, again, business as usual, um, no rebranding. Um, Comcast Business has a number of uh, wholly owned subsidiaries um, where they operate as an independent business, you know, wholly owned by Comcast. So we anticipate, you know, that model, you know, moving for the foreseeable future. Again, we're really excited about the opportunity. I don't know if you got any specific more questions about that, but would be more to more than happy to share with what we know at this point in time. Excellent. Well, congratulations yeah. on that, and um, we'll have you guys back on once it's uh, closed and you've got a new product set or you got new products or more stuff you want to share. We'd love to have you. Um, earlier, Mike and I were discussing SD WAN, of course, and uh, I mentioned in a joking way that. It's similar to Waze, yet for your internet service. Can you guys give us a little better explanation uh, for our audience to, to get a, an understanding how that works? Yeah, absolutely. So, again, thank you very much for you know, having us here on the Six Man Podcast. Um, so, Michael Long, Director of Solutions Engineering, I know you already gave me the, back, gave the background, my background, uh, quite diverse, quite extensive. So, SD-WAN, you know, Software defined wide area networking. Yeah, let's dig into that definition a little bit. And there's a lot of misinformation that was it has been propagated out there. And I just want to you know add some color and some clarification to it. And that a lot of folks believe that SD WAN is a replacement for your old legacy MPLS network. Clearly, that is you know that is incorrect. SD-WAN is taking what we used to do as far as a routing technology, where we used to have the active backup networks. We now have that ability of being able to do active-active across multiple transports at the exact same time. So it's constantly, you know, just like you, know, you had mentioned there, you know, um, Alex, about you know, the Waze application. And you know, like sometimes even when you go into Google Maps, when you put in a destination, Google Maps will give you three or four different options about how to get there and the time to get to that different location. Waze has that same functionality to be able to give you that, how am I going to get from point A to point B, and what are my different options, and how long is it going to take me, and what, this, what does the traffic look like? So SD-WAN is really a routing technology. And now you take that routing technology, and now you think about it as an application flow routing functionality. So it's giving you that ability to be able to use multiple transports, whether it's MPLS, DIA for dedicated internet access, broadband, LTE, 5G. We even have some customers that are using satellite as one of the transport methodologies for our SD-WAN solution. So SD-WAN gives you that ability to be transport agnostic. So whether you have existing services already you could bring it to an SD-WAN solution, even a third-party MPLS network, you could bring it to this solution at Maestro G. So giving you that flexibility as far as 
having multiple transports to be able to address the application needs and also the application performance uh, that is needed. So it's, it's, with Maester G, it's, it's a lot more flexible than some of the providers that are out there. Very good. A little, That's awesome. One more thing about that, too, is that, in, in, is that when it comes to SD-WAN, there's really two different philosophies out there about how to implement it. There are some manufacturers out there that will do device-to-device SD-WAN across multiple transport mechanisms. And then there's other providers out there that will do a device to a cloud service as part of uh, an SD-WAN solution. Huh. At Macergy, we have the ability of being able to do both. So it's not a, a single technology of how to implement something. We have the ability of being able to do multiple ways of being able to implement it and be transport agnostic at the exact same time. So it's really def- it's definitely a unique position to be in. Absolutely. Very unique. The referee just blew his whistle. It is halftime, gentlemen. We're going to take a break and run off to our sponsors, and we will be right back. Hello. Hello never sounded so good. With Ring Central, the leading provider of business cloud communications, our powerful, easy-to-use platform provides secure and reliable business communications at your fingertips easily manage and route your calls message your team switch to video communicate collaborate and connect via any mode any device and any location make ring central your mvp message video and phone together ring central work together from anywhere hey hey, welcome back to the sixth man podcast we are still here with the macer g team we're going to pass it over to uh, Mike Early. That was You said that very sexy. Did I? <laughs> <laughs> uh, now that we have the ways of the internet kind of the basics explained uh, to us, um, what are your key differentiators of your M- Maester G's SD-WAN solution compared to the others in the market? I, I think it comes down to you know, three key components. Um, the first, and it's going to be security, performance, and agility are going to be the three key key factors. So, the first things first. Anytime you connect to the internet, security has to be first and foremost in that solution. Hmm. So, the Maestro G solution, what we've implemented is based on is on Fortinet, and it is a next generation firewall. So, right off the bat, we're thinking security first as far as what we've chosen as far as the transport, um, um, I mean, the appliance that we use in the network. The second part of it is that having that agility and that flexibility between the different transports that we use, the cloud service providers that we can connect you to, but then also the multiple layers of security that we can always add on to that service as well. That's all embedded in the exact same platform. So we're not having to cobble together different solutions to, to, for a customer's end game. And then the last part that I'll give you as far as that agility uh, capability is that whether you want a fully managed service or you want to have co-administration of the service, that we offer that agility and that flexibility there. Now, when it, the last part as far as the application performance, when you go to maestrog.com slash SLA, yes, that's a plug, um, that the service level agreements that we actually have around this platform is truly untouched by a lot of the other providers that are doing SD-WAN. So when you think about having the ability of being able to have 100% uptime, site level uptime guarantees, 100% cloud access capability, 100% in sequence packet delivery of traffic flow, and then having sub one millisecond of jitter pop to pop anywhere in the world, you know, for your voice and your video, it right. is truly unmatched and unparalleled in the industry. So I think those three things around the security, the agility, and the performance really makes you know Maestro G you know stand out uh, as far as the SD WAN providers out there. Sweet. Yeah. So if I have a client or many clients spread throughout the world. Right. Are there any regions or areas that your product cannot be delivered into? No. One of the things that <laughs> that was a very wow. short and sweet. Yeah. Answer, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. Nice. Um, 
<laughs> Sound like my ex-wife. <laughs> uh, absolutely not. I mean, I have I have customers that you know span the globe. I have customers that have locations in Russia, China, Turkey, uh, Iran. I, it, 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 I ran when once. we roll out a product, it has to be has to be globally available. So we're not tied to you know as an example in the voice world where you would be tied to a rate center for a certain product set for voice. Now, our, pro- our you know, as an example, our voice platform is available you know, globally as well. So, um, but you know, if you think about that kind of mindset, you know, that whatever we do here in the contiguous 48 states is fully available anywhere in the world. Nice, good so, to know. Yeah, that is very good to know. Um, so let's talk about that globally, right? There's, we talk about security. Uh, so I'm deploying in Iran and. Russia and China, right? Where a lot of our bad actors, I guess you would say, are stationed. Um, and security being such a, a hot topic these days, how does security play a part in your solution? Well, again, first and foremost, our SD-WAN appliance is based on a next generation firewall. Yeah. So it's yeah. based on that Fortinet appliance. So in that appliance itself, not only is it application aware with already knowing the signatures for over 4,500 applications that, that are out there. But it also has that full suite of security features in the, embedded in it. So whether it's unified threat protection, you know, any kind of threat monitoring and uh, reporting capability, a full-blown managed uh, security suite with endpoint detection and response, as well as being SASE, you know, part of the SASE foundation yep, capability. Right. So having that complete whether you're doing a generic SD-WAN deployment or doing a full security suite that you do know that you can actually build that complete zero trust uh, network um, as part of that solution. The other part that is is very unique is that part of our portal, the the customer's visibility into the network and, and the appliances itself is that since the appliance is already application aware, we've built a shadow IT functionality as part of our portal. So not only are we seeing the traffic that's going inbound and outbound of your network through that firewall out to the internet and coming back in and being able to see that traffic flow, but we're also able to see the traffic flow that could be between users within a specific branch location. So now that you have this shadow IT, you have this ability to be able to see not only you know, the, the bad applications that are going inbound and outbound, but also might be cross-talking within your network. So again, giving you a lot more visibility from a security aspect, not only you know for what's facing the internet, but what also might be internal to your organization. Nice. Yeah, huh. I like that. So I, I, as a salesman, right, I, 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 I wanna ask what vertical markets um, or, or fields should, uh, uh, that, that these companies operate in should be deploying an SD-WAN? But let me back that up because not only as a salesperson, but as a small business owner, I want to know, what do I look for? What fields are implementing SD-WANs? Is there one in particular or is everybody? It's it's really been a huge transformation. I'm sorry, Jason, you want to jump in there? Uh, I was just wondering if he was asking salesperson to salesperson or if he wanted the truth from the the technical experts. I'd love love to hear both your opinions. Well, I'll give you my opinion. you know, I've been here, because uh, this will be interesting from uh, a major D perspective, you know, I've been here a little over a year and Mike's been here, you know, over a decade. So, um, you know, I think that there'll be a, probably a little bit different perspective. Um, the perception in the marketplace um, has been that, you know, if you don't have a, you know, 50 to 100 site, you know, global, you know, wide area network, you know, opportunity, um, don't call major D. Um, I have found that to be um, anything but the truth in the last year that I've been here. Um, in terms of you know segments or industries, um, I, I see all of them. You know, I, from a sales uh, recognition perspective, you know, on a weekly basis, I can't think of one that you know I don't see. Um, I can tell you some that I do think that we're heavy in. Real quick, um, I see a lot in the professional services. Um, a lot in the legal, you know, administration, um, you know, industry. I'm not, you know, real sure why that is, um, but you know, I do see some heaviness in that. But I, I haven't seen any that are excluded. Okay. Mike. No, absolutely, I completely agree with you there, Jason. 
And, you know, manufacturing is also a huge one as well, because, you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of large or, you know, manufacturing organizations um, operate on a 24 by seven basis on a global scale. So they need to have that multiple active, active paths to be able to support that. But, you know, again, anybody that's going through any kind of a digital transformation, you know, that when they go back to reevaluate where they're going from, going from and to on a cloud perspective, as well as changing their old legacy design from a, an active backup where you're spending all this money for a passive uh, connection that's rarely used, is now you're starting to you know, take advantage of like, well, how can I transform this to be able to now have, since I'm paying for it already, maximum use of that alternative path? So it, you know, to Jason's point, there is no one segment or you know, vertical that is excluded from doing this, but everybody now wants to take advantage of it. And how right. do we get them to that point? And again, first things first, you're connecting to the internet, security is always first. Then we look on the performance and the agility functionality. That's hey, awesome. Hey, Mike and Alex, uh, yeah. if you wouldn't mind, I'd like to take just a couple minutes just yeah. when you talk about you know what our customers look like in the segments and so forth. Um, we, 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 I recently did a, a deal that would highlight the smaller end of that so that to, to get rid of that you know uh, misperception. And, and I love that Mr. Long you know brought in the, the word misinformation. It was so appropriate uh, earlier because uh, we, we hear that term uh, used a lot. Um, I recently did, did a, an SD-WAN solution um, for, a, for a law firm based here in Florida. It was two sites, um, you know, so, you know, not what you would think of from a big global, you know, firm that, you know, only focuses on large customers. Um, it was a two site, you know, SD-WAN um, that, the, that the customer required, you know, some, you know, some very strong SLAs around it. And it actually was built to support their on-prem PBX. So wow. um, we again, we, we really don't have a, a, a bottom limit, and we, we certainly don't have a top limit. Okay, that's awesome to hear. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So uh, uh, either one of you can answer this question. I recently saw a press release uh, regarding regarding your uh, performance edge product. Can you guys tell us a little bit about this new patent pending technology? I'm kind of excited to hear about it. Oh yes, absolutely. So. You know, a lot of challenges, especially when you think about, you know, the cost of now being able to have, you know, uh, internet access at some locations. Yes, the price of, you know, internet for, you know, um, uh, remote locations has gone down quite a bit. So as folks look at broadband as a solution, one of the challenges that you have, especially, and you probably experienced this, where kids come home in the afternoon about 3.30 and, they're on their Xbox and stuff like that, and you see the, the hits that you're taking on your internet connection. So a lot of companies out there already have some kind of an embedded forward error, error correction capability. But the challenge with a lot of those embedded technologies is that it might be a single stream as far as how they're addressing forward error correction and when optimization is part of it. Well, with what we've done and what we're waiting on on the patent part of it is that we've taken a blend of certain components, software embedded, as well as manufacturers embedded capability of doing not only looking at the forward error correction, but also the WAN optimization functionality. And now being able to convert a broadband connection to almost look like a, an Ethernet network so a fiber connection at that point wow. so having that ability now that you could be sitting at home on a broadband connection and now being able to have the multi-stream capability of WAN op and forward error correction combined to now make that traffic look like you're sitting on a dedicated ethernet connection in your home so you are going to gain you know performance capability on a cheap broadband solution wow wow well, <clears throat> when are you guys going to be able to start selling that? Because we have a lot of customers on broadband. Yeah, we ha we have a lot of customers. So uh, yeah, I'm expecting it. Yeah, you know, here probably before the end of this quarter. <laughs> wow, that's impressive. We're ready to yeah. sell that. Yeah, <clears throat> for sure. I mean, we're 
We like to ask oh, the yeah. product. I, we I, sell that too. <laughs> so. Gentlemen, mm-hmm. so the last question, uh, and we ask all of our visitors and wonderful guests this same question. And you, either one of you guys can go first. Uh, who is your favorite basketball player of all time? It, this is the Sixth Man Podcast, by the way. Uh, so, And it doesn't have to be the best. It just has to be your favorite. Jason, I'll let you lead. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go real quick. So my favorite, um, 33, Larry Bird. Oh, um, love you know, it. Grew up in that era, uh, baller all the way around. But I, I do have to mention a favorite Sixth Man as well. Um, which became a, a phenomenal starter. Uh, Tony Kukoc, uh, loved seeing oh, yeah. him coming off the yeah, bench. Yeah. Uh, in his early I hate the Bulls, but yeah. <laughs> he was a great player. He was a great oh, six man, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah. Game changer when, when he hit the hit the court. Uh, That's right. He contributed to he stretched the tons court of that success. Yeah. All right, Mike. You're up. So, yep. So for me, um, I, I and this is actually, you know, hits home quite a bit because um, when I was working for the state of Florida, I was an employee of Fo- Florida State University when I was building out the educational network here in the state of Florida. Go Knowles. So I was there free. Yes. Go Knowles. Um, I was there during the Charlie Ward Heisman celebration. So mm-hmm. Charlie Ward, besides being a Heisman Trophy winner for football, he went on to have a very successful basketball career. And mm-hmm. I did follow him through that whole time period, you know, with the Knicks. And, and I'm like, you know, it's uh, he, he's still, you know, true and dear, not only an upstanding gentleman, but also a fantastic, you know, all around athlete. That's, he's you know, a great athlete. that's that's the best choice thus far. Very, <laughs> very well done, Mike, from a from a Florida State fan right here. I uh, I hold much love and admiration for the one and, and only Charlie he, Ward. Plus, he was in the Army. I mean, you yeah, guys. Plus, oh, Charlie Ward or Mike? Mike. Mike, yes. So yes, now you're part. like. <laughs> hey, you know, yeah. it's Army guys. we got to stick together. <laughs> that's all right. Well, good choices, both of them, guys. Thank you. Well, so once again, guys, thank, thank you, you very much for joining us. It was great having you. Uh, we would love to have you guys back for a deeper dive into the SD WAN. I know we just kind of touched upon it. Thank you, Alex, for another great show. Thank you, Mike. Um, we are your technology champions, helping you dominate with technology. Please remember to like, share, and follow us on YouTube or wherever you like to listen to your podcast, whether it's Apple, Spotify, Google, wherever it is, we're out there. And thank you again for a great show. Excellent. Thank you, thank thank you, guys. you guys. Be good. Be well. Thanks for listening. If you'd like to contact us, reach out at 239-215-4200. That's 239-215-4200. Or email us at info at sixmanpodcast.com. This segment of the Six Man Podcast is brought to you by the production team and Eminem Multimedia. At Eminem, we make media that makes you learn, laugh, cry, or buy.